myself Kunju Sharma, Fresh Kanyar University, and the subject is plant pathology. Uh, today we are going to discuss about disease forecasting. So uh, here we will discuss about what is the aim of uh, the disease forecasting, what are the objective of disease forecasting and how disease forecasting is an important part in plant pathology. So first is uh, the aim to control the disease to suppress pathogen from altering one or more sides of the disease triangle. So why the triangle? So this require knowledge about disease disease forecasting that is a greater knowledge of the disease situation than is available in most cases. Forecasting that is the predicting for the occurrence of plant disease in a specified area ahead of time. So uh, why it is done? So if we can predict the probable outbreaks or increase in intensity of distance, sorry, intensity of disease, we can be well prepared. So uh, take suitable control measure in advance to avoid the losses. So it involves like well-organized teamwork and expenditure of time, energy and money. So what are the uses of forecasting? It is used and add to the timely application of chemicals. So if we are uh, going to use the timely all the applications of chemicals than control measures. Example of first spray warning service that is the grapevine downy mildew forecasting scheme in France. And in Germany and in Italy, it was in 1920. So the disease forecasting methods are available for the following plant diseases, plant diseases and countries. So plant diseases like grapevine downy mildew, countries are Austria, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Romania, Spain. USSR. Then the plant disease is cucurbit downy mildew and the uh, country is USA. Then uh, potato late blight, the countries are Australia, Australia, Brazil, Finland, France, Germany. Greece, Japan, Netherlands, Norway, and UK, and the USSR. Then uh, the disease is tobacco blue mold, and the countries are Canada or USA. So apple and pear is kept in which the Australia, Canada, Netherlands, New Zealand, and USA. Sugar wheat, root rot, which goes uh, in the country of USA. Then the corn, practical wheels, That is uh, USA and the sugar wheat curly top also in USA.
so what all information is needed for disease forecasting so forecasting diseases is a part of applied epidemiology hence the knowledge of epidemiology or epidemiology development of the disease under the influence of risk of factors associated with the host so if necessary for accurate forecasting so the factors of epidemic and its component should be known in advance before forecasting is done after that host factors host factor like prevalence of susceptible varieties in the given locality response of host at different stage of the growth to the activity of pathogen for example some diseases are found during seedling stage and so some diseases are found during the seedling stages while others attack grown up plants so there is the density and distribution of the host in a given locality so the dense population of susceptible variety invite quick spread of pandemic so dense population of susceptible variety invite quick spread of an epidemic growing susceptible varieties in scattered location and that too in limited area are also promote prone to epiphytotic then next is pathogen factors so pathogen factor like amount of primary initial inoculum in the air soil or plantic material dispersal of inoculum so dispersal of inoculum spore germination incubation period sporulation on the infected host then read this appearation read dispersal this amination of spores then prenating stage that is live throughout a, a number of years inoculum potential and destiny so live through a number of years inoculum potential and density in the seed soil and air then third factor is the information about environmental factor so third thing is information about environmental factor first is the temperature then humidity then light intensity and then wind velocity so 
the forecasting which is based on primary inoculums so there is the determination and presence density and viability of primary inoculum determine in the air soil or planting material so there is the assessing occurrence of visible spores or pathogen or propagules in air trapping surface so soil borne diseases primary inoculum which is indeterminately or in determination by monoculture method seed testing can be done and accordingly chemical seed treatment then different seed testing method seed testing can be done and accordingly chemical seed treatment then different seed testing members like presence of dose smut so there is the different seed testing methods presence of the loose smut of wheat ergot of pearl millet and viral diseases of patho can can be detected in sea loads so the experiment so the extent of many virus diseases is dependent on the severity of the preceding winter which affects the size of vector population in the growing season so uh, there are the example forecasting which is based on weather conditions weather condition like temperature relative humidity rainfall light without uh, without velocity etc so during the crop season and during the and during the inter crop season are measured so weather condition above the crop and at the soil surface are also recorded so there is the use of computer for disease forecasting so in some advanced countries forecasting of disease is made by the use of computers so this system gives the results quickly then one such computer based program is in the USA is known as bleep cast for potato the same so the uh, one such computer based program is the usa sorry in the usa is known as blade cast for the potato late blight so the example of other well developed forecasting systems like early and late leaf spot of groundnut blister blight of tea southern corn uh, leaf blight 
then the rice blast wheat stem rust then brown strip downy mildew of corn after that uh, the next topic is the remote sensing remote sensing remote sensing is estimating an object phenomenon without being in physical contact with it so remote sensing is a science or art that permits us to obtain information about an object a phenomenon through analysis of data obtained from host so remote sensing is a science that permits us to obtain the information about an object a phenomenon through the analysis of data obtained through sensory device without being in physical contact with so objectives of remote sensing in plant pathology that is the assessment of disease over a vast area to know the relationship of diseases and environment then to know the origin and development of epidemics then the quantity assessment the quantitative assessment of the disease so there are the remote sensing techniques like first is the aerial photography and another type is the satellite photography and we can say that satellite remote sensing so the first is the aerial photography so aerial photography can detect object and land over a larger area than colwell in 1956 first used remote sensing technique so uh, first used remote sensing techniques for monitoring stem rust of wheat so uh, the key to distinguish disease and healthy parts of a crop is the use appropriate film or different to use the appropriate film or a filter combinations so the main life is so uh, the key to distinguish diseased and healthy parts of a crop is the use of microscope so the main film type used are pandemic infrastructure or infrared normal color and rural coconut so the infrared films are preferred because of their superior sensitivity to visible light and to near infrared wavelength so there is the color infrared so the color infrared or 
ectachrome uh, aero infrared So how does the NR NIR works? So leaves have chlorophyll second and spongy cell surface. So the leaves have chlorophyll second. And spongy cell structure have so the chlorophyll which reflects the green green light. The range is five hundred to six hundred. Nanometer. That means the light is spongy and cell structure is black. That is the near infrared and the light. Uh, so less chlorophyll second and less spongy cell means unhealthy tissue, unhealthy vegetation. So here you can see the different different plant like near the infrared. So uh, first, which is unhealthy, vegetation has less chlorophyll and less spongy cell structure. Then less spongy cell structure means less reflection and more absorption of IR light, sorry, NR light. So these are the images of cotton field infested with cotton root rot from approximately in 1927. So they were all taken at an angle except so distances vary depending on the location in the image due to perspective. So distances vary depending on the location in the image due to perspective image was taken from directly overhead scale is equal throughout the image making it easy to determine. Okay, uh, up to here, we just completed the remote sensing. In next class, in next class, we will discuss about satellite imaging 
or weather satellites and how they will work. Thank you. Pseudomonas syringi in tomato has been shown to survive in dried tomato seed for 20 years. Like that is the loose smut of wheat or barley that is Astilago titricae. Another is Pseudomonas syringi, that is the uh, colony formation in media. And another is on tomato leaves, the bacterial speck leads to small angular spots with yellow halos. Another uh, type is infected host as reservoir of inoculum. Uh, like first is collateral or alternative host that is wild host of same families. Collateral host that means collateral host are those hosts which belongs to the same family of plant. So uh, these also provide the nutrients to the uh, pathogen in the absence of the main host. Sugarcane and sorghum halems belongs to the same family poesy. Pathogen example like pipe smart of sugarcane that is Astilago sacheri. When the sugarcane cleared from the fields, the pathogen can survive on sorghum halampsis and when the sugarcane is replanted in the next season, the pathogen can continue to grow in sugarcane. The fungal pathogen for blast disease of rice. Like that is Pyricularia gracie, that is telomorph. Then Magna Porthigraci can infect the grass weeds like that is Brachiaria Mutica, then Dinebra, Lercia, and Panicum ripens. So they belong to the same poesy family, same as rice, can survive during of a season of the rice crop.
as soon as fresh rice crop is raised the conidia or inoculum liberated from the weed host is disseminated by wind which infects the fresh rice crop then infected host as a reservoir of inoculum alternate host that is wild host of other families alternate that means whenever uh, the main host which is not available then in the uh, absence of the main host or in the absence uh, of the host they can easily survive on the alternate host and the alternate host which will be provide all the nutrients to the pathogen so however when a pathogen has very wide host range as sclerotium rolfesi rhizoctonia solani fusarium uh, moliniform and is tolerant to wide range of weather conditions the alternate host become very important source of survival of the pathogen so these alternate hosts are very important for the completion of the life cycle of nitrocious rust pathogen for example in temperate regions the alternate host of paxinia graminis triticae that is a black or stem rust pathogen of wheat uh, that is berberis you will get is the barberry uh, sorry the barberry bush so barberries uh, will get is grows side by side with the cultivated host in such areas this wide host belonging to a different families is important for survival of the fungus then third is infected host as a reservoir of inoculum that is alternate host that is white host a uh, wild host of other families so the role of alternate host is not as important as of collateral host however when a pathogen has very wide host range as sclerotium rolfesi rhizoctonia solani fusarium and is tolerant to wide range of weather conditions the alternate host uh, to wide range of weather conditions alternate host become become very important source of survival of the pathogen so these alternate host are very important for the completion of the life cycle of hydrocious rust pathogen for example in temperate regions the alternate host of Paxinia graminis triticae that is black or stem rust pathogen of wheat of uh, 
wheat that is berberis vulgaris the berberi bush that infected host as reserver of inoculum uh, that is self sown crops so uh, infected host as a reserver of inoculum in the ratoon crops so ratooning that is reduce the cost of cultivation but also disappear so but also dispenses with the requirement of seed material and some cultural practices like land preparation and preparatory irrigation then new shoot uh, new shoot or sprout springing up from the root of sugar cane after it has been probed so sometimes the ratoon crops also harbor the plant pathogen for example sugar cane mosaic then ratooning is an age of all method of propagation in sugar cane in which the substarian buds on stable the part of cane left left underground after harvesting Ma. harvesting plant cane give rise of give rise to succeeding crop stem which is usually referred to as ratoon of the stable crop so a new crop especially of rice bananas or sugar cane that grows from the stable of the crop that is already harvested then infected host as reseller of inoculum like survival by latent infection latent infection refers to the conditions in which the plant pathogen uh, may survive for a long time in plant tissue without development of visible symptoms an example that is xylella fastidiosa the causal agent of pears disease of grape vine in fact different weeds without developing visible symptoms then let's look at the source which contains these pathogens like first is infected host as a reserver of inoculum then second is saprophytic survival outside the host then third one is dormant spores or other structures in or on the host or outside the host then fourth is association with insects nematodes and fungi then second is saprophytic survival outside the host 
uh, so in the absence of the cultivated host plant fungi are capable of surviving as saprophytes and can be studied under three categories like first is soil inhabitants those organisms which survive indefinitely in the soil as saprophyte in the absence uh, of the host plant for example the species of phythium rhizoctonia and sclerotium so these are the soil inhabitants because it will be survive indefinitely in the soil as a saprophyte whenever host will be not there another is root inhabitants like according to the name these are more specialized parasites that survive in soil in close association with their host so the active saprophytic phase remains as long as the host tissue in which they are living as parasite is not completely decomposed uh, for example a species of fusarium verticillium so that is vascular wilt causing fungi and root rot of cotton that is phymetotrichum omnivorum and another uh, type of uh, saprophytic survival outside the host that is rhizosphere colonizer so those organisms which colonize the dead uh, dead substrate in the those organisms substrate in the root root region and continue to live like that for a long period which are for a long period which are more tolerant in soil antagonism antagonism uh, that means uh, it will be works as against of the particular for example leaf mold in tomato that is cladosporium fulvium so the ability to live sapro the ability to live that is saprophytically enables many plant pathogens to survive in the absence of growing susceptible plants then saprophytic survival that is usually occur in or on the soil that is waxman in 1971 distinguished between uh, like in soil inhabitants and soil invaders soil inhabitants that is comprise the basic fungus flora of the soil and soil invaders that is comprise the short lived exotics differentiate soil in plants soil invaders so first is what is soil inhabitants and what is soil invaders soil inhabitants these are an specialized parasite with a wide host range that are able to survive indefinitely in the soil as a saprophyte 
like uh, up to their life is on they can easily survive only in the soil because these are the unspecialized parasites another is soil invaders these are more specialized parasite that survive in soil in close association with their host soil inhabitants include obligate saprophytes and facultative parasites so they are exopathogens and another type is soil invaders include facultative saprophytes which are endopathogen and these are the root infected fungi third is soil and plant debris serve as media for their saprophytic survival and soil invaders are the active saprophytic phase remains as long long as the host tissue in which they were living as parasite is not completely decomposed then the soil inhabitants they have high competitive saprophytic survival ability that means uh, they can easily survive in the soil and the soil invaders are they have low competitive saprophytic survival ability soil inhabitants species of phytium rhizoctonia sclerotium etc that is survive as soil inhabitants for considerable length of time in absence of the host and the soil invaders uh, most plant pathogenic fungi and bacteria are soil invaders many soil invaders are vascular wilt causing species of fusarium that is verticillium etc are the soil invaders uh, in next class we will discuss uh, about source which contain these pathogen thank you